Well, hello, my fellow DIY friends out there. How are you? Jeff here again with another great, useful video for you today. So today we are going to show you how to properly install a transition piece like this one here, a threshold molding, to terminate your wood flooring up against a carpeted floor with a twist. Because what we have here today is this happens to end right above what used to be a sliding glass door. So in addition to showing you how to terminate it against the carpet, like this, we have to show you how are we going to terminate it when the slab of the living room is now about an inch and a half above the slab of the patio. So stay tuned, let's get busy. So now as we get to the end of our wood floor here and we're going to end up with a piece that's right here and then we'll figure out what, what to cut and how big to make it here. But now we have to start to think about what are we going to do about this transition and this is probably one of the worst scenarios that we've encountered for doing a transition because what we're, where I'm sitting right now is I'm on this carpet, this is Berber carpeting that's out in the patio. So the patio used to be right here, and then this was the living room, and there's about a one inch drop off. So it's, it, this is just, there's no um, pieces out there that will uh, single-handedly cover this type of um, transition that we need here. So what we have to do is, I have a piece that comes close. You can't use a carpet transition piece because this carpet is, is below the floor pretty much. It's maybe right at the floor level. But the shape of those, those carpet transition pieces don't, don't give you enough um, dimension to make that happen. So what we have to do here, and let me just kind of show you here. This is the piece that I think that will work the best. This is what we normally use um, at the, this is a threshold piece that we normally use where the wood floors come up against a sliding glass door. So apparently, I don't know if they had sliding glass doors here at one time. The previous owner converted this to a, in, a, uh, an enclosed patio. Okay, so you know that if you use this piece here, you can't put it up against the edge of the wood like that. You have to leave an expansion joint. I'm gonna leave it about a half inch like that. And so that means your carpet over here, if we come around to this side here, See how the carpeting is right there, comes right up against it. We'll eventually have to get a razor and cut this carpeting to be flat up against the side of that, that piece there again. But look what happens at the bottom of it though. See how we're, we're still about a half inch off the floor there. So what we're gonna have to do, and we can't just glue it down like this at an angle, that's not acceptable right there. It has to be parallel to the top of the, the floor. So you can see what's gonna happen here. We're gonna have this big gap under the bottom. So what we have to do is go get some metal strips from Home Depot and glue those down. And then this will glue on top of the, those metal strips. And that way we will be covering the floor like we're supposed to. It will be up against the carpet. It'll be up a little bit higher. And yeah, this is, uh, this is a, a potential issue with your toes, but there's really nothing else you can do when you have a, a situation like this where you're uh, about an inch or more drop off from the from where you want to be see and then and on, and on top of that the other thing we have facing us here if you look here I mean the builder just gave such a poorly terminated cement structure there the termination of their the ledge from the living room in down to the patio level here it's really bad so we have a lot of stuff to fight here we may have to chisel away some of this but these are the things that you have to deal with that you're going to be faced with at the end of your flooring whenever you have two dissimilar types of flooring and even if this was wood flooring meeting up with wood flooring this is still an inch lower than this so the other thing you could do is, and, and 
if, if you have all the equipment and the know-how, is you could get a big piece of wood and just mill your own piece of wood that would be perfectly custom fit. You can do that as well. But we think that this piece will do just fine for us. All right, so now as we tackle this end zone here, this is the last piece, there's a couple of things we need to figure out. We need to figure out exactly where and how we're going to mount the transition. And we also need to figure out how big do we need to make the last row. So we're going to be doing rip cuts similar to, to this piece here. And it'll be approximately that size. And so we need to figure out how it's all going to fit in here into this channel and tie up so that it will end up exactly up against this edge of the carpet here. So looking at this channel, we can see that different people have done different things in here over the years. So we see evidence that there used to be a uh, different type of carpeting here and there's bits of glue. There's chunks of the older carpeting there. So we need to clean out this whole channel, vacuum it out, make sure it's nice and clean. So we can glue down our metal support piece that's probably going to go right up here next to this carpet tack strip here. Okay, so the channel has been all cleaned out now, and so now I have my metal piece, so this is what we call C-channel metal, and you can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's, and I got a long enough piece that I just had to cut a few inches off at the end, but this will go all the way down this channel here, and our intent, I'm just dry fitting it right now just to see how everything looks, <clears throat> but our intent is we will glue this piece down first to the cement, and then the transition piece here will go right on top of it like this. See? So my goal here is to get these two all lined up all the way down so that the metal piece just provides a base for the transition piece to sit on so that he can sit above the floor there and the floor will go under it. Sort of like I have this little narrow piece right here. Okay, so now looking at it from the floor side here, now we need to determine how wide do we need to rip the piece of wood here, the, the last row of flooring here. And so I've got this sample piece here, and it will plug onto the last, second to last row like that, and it will come over to here. Okay, and then so we normally cut the piece here so that it'll end within about a half inch of the center part of the transition piece there, see? So it gives it room to expand this way in and out of the, the overhang there. And so you can see I've got a mark right here on my piece of wood, so this is how wide the last row is going to be here. So what I'm going to do now is take that mark over to my table saw, and I will set the fence on my table saw to be whatever this width is, and I'll quickly run three pieces of my laminate hardwood flooring through that table saw and they'll all come out the exact same width. This would be a perfect time if you haven't already to hit the subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell, click on that and that will alert you to every time we put in a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us and any questions you have, please enter them in the comments down below, too. We have the first of the two ripped pieces that I just did on the table saw there, based on that measurement I just took. So it's sitting right there in place, the last plank of the row. And we'll dry fit these guys together here. So our metal piece is going to go here, and it will eventually be sitting right over here like this. And then the transition piece, when, it, when everything's all glued down, let me try to get him more over here. He'll sit on top of that metal piece, he'll get glued to that metal piece, and all of this will be weighed down till they dry. And then, now you can see here, the wood is free to expand and contract in and out of the, that space in there. So that's how this is going to fit. All right, since we're not going to be using this bigger piece here, What's cool about this one is, since it's cut nice and straight and everything, this will make a nice ledger board for us when we do cabinets. 
So I like to have a few ledger boards lying around. You mount these to your studs on the wall and the kitchen, nice and level like that. And then when you mount your cabinets, you rest them right along this edge of the ledger board and it keeps them all perfectly lined up. I hardly throw anything out. Well, you can see I've got my final two rows here all done on here. The only thing we don't have is we are missing one other piece of, we need to get another six foot section of that, um, that flooring transition piece there. And so if you look at this metal piece here, you see how it's all flexing and everything and it wants to kind of twist and all that and it's not sitting down right. So what we want to do is we were originally going to glue everything together and weigh them down at once. But since we have to wait anyway tonight, what I want to do is take this metal piece run beads of PL adhesive all the way down there and we'll glue this thing down where it's level like that and snug against the bottom and then we'll put some boxes of wood flooring on top of it to weigh them down to weigh this whole metal piece down that way it'll actually be better for us because when we come in tomorrow morning with the other piece this will already be dried and solidified and it'll be perfect and level and it'll be a piece of cake to just go ahead and glue the two transition pieces on there Okay, so here we are a minute later. I've put down some thick beads of PL adhesive all the way down. Now we're going to seat our metal C-channel piece down into it. All right, so we're pushing it into the glue here. And you can see it does want to bounce up, so we do need to get those weights on here. Well, we're here the next day. And this is dried overnight. There's our metal piece that's down. So now we're just going to glue the threshold piece right on top of that and let it overhang over the wood flooring. So just a little dry fitting here. One last sanity check here uh, to show you the profile of what it's going to look like. So we're going to line up the threshold on, in this case here, with the back end of this metal piece here. So they're gonna line up all the way down the row as you look all the way up there to the end, see? And we're going to leave almost a half inch of space underneath the overhang there. So this wood flooring here now, these planks, can expand in and out underneath that overhang. And that is the proper way that you fit something like this. This is how you install these molding pieces here. This is the, technically this is a threshold piece. They don't sell this piece at Home Depot or at Floor and Decor or at Lowe's. So I usually have to go to like Lumber Liquidators or you can order them online, but most of the stores don't stock it, which is really stupid because they sell you the wood planks, but all they have is reducers or T-mold pieces in stock in the stores. So we're gonna put some glue down on this metal track here all the way down the end there and then we'll set this piece down and once it's set in place and we're happy with it we will go ahead and put a couple of more cases of the wood flooring you see one sitting right over there we'll set it right down on top of it and let it dry overnight before we do anything else and then tomorrow we'll play with the carpet here we'll let the carpet come up against it and see how much carpet needs to be trimmed off of the edge of it Okay, now I have the second piece put in that goes all the way down to this other end here, dry fitted. And what I'm trying to do here is I set it so that the seam between both of these pieces is going to coincide with the seam between the planks here. So it will kind of blend in a little easier. So now we're just ready to glue them down. All right, so we've applied our caulk of PL, our little bead that goes all the way down there. So now we're going to take the first threshold piece and mount it right on top of the track there. Remember how I said we were gonna line it up to the ends of the metal there? And then we'll just mash it down. And as you mash it down here, you'll see it sets right down in there into the PL adhesive. And we're gonna leave it in that position and I'll align the other end down here too. And then we'll put that box of wood over there on top of it. All right, so I've got the first 
box of wood just kind of resting on that end there. I'm going to put another one over here, but I just wanted to be able to make sure I can see the metal underneath so I can make sure we're lined up to the edge of it. And then coming back to this side, you can see the glue oozed out there on the end. And I've got a piece of blue tape right there marking the edge of the the forward edge over here on this side of the transition piece. Because in case this piece ever moves or shifts or anything, we can push it right back into place and line it up with the tape. So there is our transition piece in place here. And we've got the weights on it and we're going to let it just sit overnight here. And then when we come back in in the morning and it's all cured up, we're going to have to slice some of the edge of this carpet off in order to make it line up with our transition piece down there. Well, here we are the next morning. Everything has cured overnight. We've taken the wood boxes off. And our transition piece there is looking really nice going across there. So what we've done is we've ended our wood flooring right here with a rip cut. And then we've installed our transition piece to cover it and it is glued down now. So this thing is rock solid. I can step on it perfectly and it doesn't, doesn't even budge or bend or anything because we fully immersed it in the uh, PL adhesive on the bottom. So now what we're going to do is, if you look at the carpet here, you can see the carpet needs to be straightened. The cuts need to be straightened along this edge here. So we're gonna uh, take care of that and make sure that it's completely abutted against the transition piece here all the way across the floor. So like in this spot right here, you can see the carpet is gonna stick over about a half inch. So we're going to be cutting about a half inch of it off. And we want to cut it at a distance such that it'll be to the point where all we have to do is just kind of mash it down, similar to what you see right here. And it'll look like it's completely flush with the piece here. Now, you can't just do it like this right now without cutting a little bit off of it because, see, it buckles up right here. So we just have to probably maybe a quarter of an inch. We'll experiment and see if a quarter of an inch or a half an inch will do the trick. Okay, so I just wanted to take a closer look at this profile of this piece here. So do not confuse this with a reducer. This is not a reducer piece. This is called a threshold piece. And it's meant to be used in the threshold of a sliding glass door. And so this is not a T-mold. This is not a reducer. It is a threshold piece. And the reason why I buy this particular one here, if you look at it, this thing is solid bamboo. It's extremely rough and tough and rigid, and it doesn't bend that much. It'll still flex a little, but it doesn't bend and twist like the thin little T-molds do. So I like to use these for my end caps. So you know, a lot of people call these end caps as well. Uh, so uh, this costs about $50 for a six foot section. So you're looking at a remnant of a cut that we made. But you can see why we use these. I mean, just rock solid all around. Nice and sturdy. And so here, when you look at the label on the box, you see that says right there, stranded, carbonized. Um, what I like about the stranded bamboos is they shred it up and they compress it under high heat and pressure. And what that does is it just makes it super, super strong and it gives it a much higher Janka rating than even your strongest uh, um, American red oak, which would be our toughest wood flooring that you can get in, in the U.S. from a U.S. made product. But having your, um, your stranded natural bamboo is about the strongest type of flooring for you know, wood type product that you can get. Okay, so we've sliced along the edge of the carpet and the carpet is now fitting nicely along the edge of our transition piece here our threshold piece and this is looking pretty good and on the back side here here's the back side view uh, we still have a few little chunks to clean up and straighten out but yeah we can we can trim that off a, a little neater and everything here but this is how it uh, happens here and keep in mind our, our situation what we had here before there used to be a sliding glass door here and the previous owner had converted this into an open 
carpeted uh, sort of an enclosed patio here. They put windows in. This used to be screened in. You can see across the street where the other ones are screened units there. So what happens is sometimes they'll take out the sliding glass doors, but you still have that inch and a half bump up, and that's what we were dealing with here. And I, I know some of you are going to say, hey, why didn't you mill a wide piece of wood that comes way out here like this? Well, you can't. You can't mill something that's going to come out and rest on top of the carpet because the carpet won't support it, and you'll step on it, and it'll go like this, and it'll separate from its support over here. So this is the appropriate method for terminating a wood floor up against carpeting. In fact, on the manufacturer's website for this threshold piece, they specifically state that the purpose of a threshold piece, piece here is to terminate wood flooring against carpeting. Because carpeting can really only just reside up against it, you know. And the reason why we have this bump up is because the curb here, due to the the sliding glass door, the way they do the, the uh, slabs here for the sliding glass door. So is that a tripping hazard? Well, you know, down here in Florida, everybody is sort of accustomed to walking from patios and stepping up uh, an inch and a half into uh, floors. So yeah, they, they will get used to it. It won't be a problem at all for them. So if you found this video useful, We'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below. Let us know that you like us. And you can also subscribe to our channel here so that you can come back and binge watch many more videos of our engineering projects for you that will help you out. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that it will alert you every time we upload a new video. So we hope this video has helped you, and if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. We will see you on the next video. Have a great one.